Hello everyone, welcome to Alex518. So today our topic is troubleshooting flex motion board with overcurrent failure. I am showing you the actual board that we troubleshoot and also the failure. This board when installed into the system or installed into the equipment, it will only powered up by 24 volt. But the system detects an overcurrent when this board is powered up. So for this video, we will be going to show you our components isolation method that identify the root cause of overcurrent. Stay tuned, the details is coming up right now. Alright, so the first thing that I did was to sketch the schematic diagram of 24 volts line of the board in order for me to see the overview and I was suspecting that uh, one of the components here might be the root cause of uh, overcurrent. As you can see, we have a uh, 2 5 volts regulator and each um, regulator is uh, having a limiting resistor R1 and R2. So the second thing that I did was to measure the current from uh, this line, from R2 line, and also measure the current from R1. And it is very obvious that R1 is having the higher reading because probably of the uh, load on the output of the regulator which uh, having a uh, logic IC and smooth trigger IC but in order to uh, validate this uh, 25 milliamp I need to check the data sheet of these ICs the logic IC and the Smith trigger ICs to check the current consumption and uh, validate these uh, 25 milliamp. Okay, so um, after checking the data sheet, I found that uh, the total IC consumption from uh, logic IC is a uh, 0.56 milliamps ICC and the Smith trigger IC uh, based from the data sheet is uh, 0.8 milliampere so uh, the total consumption of this IC is uh, 1.36 milliamps so um, based from the calculation, uh, 1.36 plus uh, supposed to be without load is 8 milliampere. The based from the calculation, the ideal calculation, the reading here must be uh, 9.36 milliamp only but the reading goes high up to uh, 25 milliamp for me the 25 milliamp is too much so my next step is to isolate this IC one by one and to find out which one consume current higher than data sheet specification but before that Please take note that ICC is a current used with no load on the outputs. Let's move to the next step. Right now, in this step, I am showing you the location of IC that I isolated. The 5 logic ICs and the 5 Smith trigger IC. During the isolation, only when I removed U15 the current consumption dropped 
from 25 milliamps down to 13 milliamps. Almost 50% of current on the R1 line consumed by U15. For me, it isn't normal. So I replaced the U15 with new component and voila! The current maintained 13 milliamps and the board passed when installed back into the system. Thanks for the isolation method, it saved the day. Thank you. Before I end the video, I will show you the method on how I measure the current on the board. So in this slide, I am going to show you the fastest way that I did in measuring the current on the board at the R1 line. The first thing that I did was I lifted up the R1 to disconnect from the input of 5 volts regulator. I selected this area because from here I can see a wide access to set up the multimeter proofs. Considering R1 is such a huge component, I can directly prove the multimeter as shown in the illustration, in which the multimeter is configured to measure current. After the setup, what I did next was the isolation method by removing the IC one by one. So I removed this IC and measure the current. I remove another IC to measure the current and so on. This is an easy way to find out which IC have caused the high current in the R1 line. You can lift the VCC pin using a sharp tweezer and soldering iron or you can directly remove the IC using the hot air. But both methods require advanced soldering skills otherwise you may damage the pin or the solder pad. Take note that before the isolation method is performed I already replaced the 5 volts regulator IC of the R1 line. This IC but the current drone still the same. Therefore, I highly suspected that one of the ICs were causing the high current drone from the 24 volts line. Thank you. To power up the board, I will just use an external 24 volts power supply. Alright, that's all for this topic. Hoping the video is helpful for some of you. Wish that I could do better next time. Thanks for watching and keep safe. Let's go!